Hello, hello, hello. This is your Captain Bernick speaking, and welcome to another special touch designer tutorial. Um, before we get started, I will shortly explain why this tutorial is special. And yes, um, it's December, and some of you who have been already following me for a while might already know what it means and for the others I will explain. Um, every December I am creating a special on my Patreon which is called Merry Crisis where I create some special sort of content for people who sign up for my Patreon to download. Um, and the whole income of my Patreon of the month December will be donated to people in crisis. Um, this time I will donate the income to an urgent relief fund for Gaza's children. I will write more about it in the description, so please read the description. And yeah, over the past years um, I'm already doing this for the fourth time now. Um, we have been able to donate quite a lot of money and I am very happy about that and want to continue doing this special. So for this month I decided to record four tutorials which are basically chosen by people who following me, follow me. And um, some weeks ago I posted on my Instagram um, asking people to send me references of stuff they would like to see as a tutorial. And then I chose four of it and made an own interpretation of it because I don't want to replicate other people's work and rather interpret stuff in my own kind of way using techniques the references are showing. And yeah, for example, for the stuff we are going to create today, um, this has been the reference. It's by a great artist called Saeko Ehara. Um, she's a fellow artist and VJ doing really cool stuff. Um, and yeah, I found it very interesting to map any sort of image or video input on some points or particles. In this case, it's spheres. And yeah, in the end, I came up with an interpretation mapping any sort of image or video input on a particle cloud. And I found a very, very easy way to do this. And yeah, usually it's quite difficult. You have to do a lot of instancing and anything, but um, I found out it's quite easy to do with the particles GPU. It's also very performant and I'm having this in 4K resolution running on 60 frames per second. Um, uh, yeah, and you can easily exchange the images like you could use the touch designer butterfly, for example, or I don't know, the banana in case you like, or what's also very, very cool is using your webcam or any, I don't know, image input. Um, I mean, my webcam is quite bad, but this is showing me as particles. <laughs> um, and if I would set it up a little bit better, it would be quite recognizable. Um, but yeah, I am mainly using this to come up with images. And now it died. Yeah, so I'm using this, using my own imagery. In this case, I created this rendering and then I am loading it into this and yeah this is the base technique we are learning this time and then I will also show 
how I use this technique um, to create my own kind of artwork. Um, yeah, for this um, I, I want to mention because um, I am really enjoying sharing my process and my way of doing things but in this case this artwork is quite personal and it's very much my own style which I hardly do in tutorials and I really would like to ask you if you recreate this sort of thing to also interpret in your own kind of way and not just replicate my setup and my my artwork. Um, I would appreciate this a lot. Thank you. And um, yep, that's it. And let's stop the talking and I will see you on my screen. All right, welcome on my screen and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is load in the image we want to use. In my case, I'm using this rendering of a flower I did. And um, yeah, this one is quite high resolution, so I really recommend also using a quite high resolution. Um, and I also recommend using something transparent. And if you don't have a transparent um, image, you could also, like, I will show it quickly. If you have a background, you can use the chroma key after it and then get rid of a value so it's transparent. Um, if it's not transparent, it's not that important, but you only want to kind of have your object as particles and not have a lot of stuff going on in the background. So if you use an image with a background, use something with a smooth background and with nothing too much going on. So, um, all right, let's move on. Um, so first thing I want to do is make this one fit to a square. So um, use a fit and then maybe use fit outside. So um, this is quite nice in focus right now. And then after it, I will create a null. Um, so this is nicely grouped and we can later, if we select something, we can just use this null and don't have to mess up any sort of order. Um, okay. So then um, we need to create a UV map. A UV map is kind of like a an, an distribution of pixels, um, which will later um, define the distribution of our particles. So we will create a ramp for this. And we want this ramp to have the same resolution as which we used here. And in this fit, I just left it on default by a um, thousand by a thousand. Um, and to have this one as the same resolution, you could just um, copy this parameter and then paste it here. And then when you change the reference, uh, the resolution here, it also change it, changes here. But I will leave it on 1000 right now. Um, yes. All right. So then after this ramp, we will create a reorder. And then also out of this ramp, we will create a flip, which we will yet then use to use the flop, <laughs> um, bottom left. And then we will use this one as the second input for our reorder. 
and then we will change the output of the green to 2. And now if we set, set this to 0, we have a UV map. But for our use, we don't want this to be 0, we want some sort of blue. Because the, the green and the red um, values, so if you set this to 0 again, will define it's like a grid. So out of this, for every pixel, it will create like some sort of point. So like this, we have a thousand going on here and a thousand here, and it's just like a grid because the distribution right now is even. And then we want to use the blue input um, to make it 3D-ish, like it's the translate on the on the y-axis. Right now we only, or yes, I think so. It's yeah, it's like the definition of height. So um, in this case, we will use this one as a reference for the height. So um, we will create a level after this. I will show why we do this and then we use this one as an input for the reorder as well and th then we set the output of the blue to input 3. So if we look at this now we have a grid where our particles will be born and then we have blue areas which create some sort of offset to make it 3D-ish. <laughs> And yes, so that's that's fine to use. I will create a null after this to just um, name this particle source. And then we will create a particles GPU, which you can find in the palette. You can open the palette. If it's not open, just hit this button. And then under the tools section in the particles GPU, just drag it in and then let's look at this now and we will use the render to make it visible in the background and now let's make some changes to this. So first thing, change the resolution. In my case I am going with this, which is a 4K 16 to 9 resolution. If you're not on the commercial version of Touch Designer, you can leave this on default. Um, but I'm al always going with 4K resolution if I can, um, because it just it looks better. Um, yes, then we we don't want our particles to be leaves, so we change the material to line, which is just those dots. And then we also turn off the bounce. And yes, that's it for now. And now, um, currently the particles are born in a rectangle coming from the top of the screen. And we want this to change to our map and we just have to connect this map our particle source to the first input of this so just do this and then you can see we have a grid going on and we have some offset here as well um, so Let's zoom in into this. You can zoom in this into this particles GPU interactive camera. It's quite nice because if you make the viewer active, you can just move around here. So I'm right clicking on my mouse right now to move. And left click lets you rotate it. And if you hold your mouse wheel and move it to right or left, you can zoom in or out. So I'm zooming in quite a lot now. And at the moment, I don't want my particles to fall down. And 
We can change this by heading into the forces here and turning off this value to zero. And then we can reset this. And yeah, nice. All right, then we want to be able to reset this quickly. So we just create a keyboard in and put the reference on our reset. So whenever we hit one, we get new particles. Let's move this up here. And also, um, I want this to have a black background for now. So I'm inserting a RGB key here just so we can see it a bit better what's going on. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to have is our color, like the color of our reference image as the particle color, like it's mapped on the particles. And to do that, I'm just using a select and I'm using this null, just drag it down here. And then bring it down here. And then the second input is the particle source color. So if we connect this with this and hit one, we get our image mapped on those particles. And now you can see why I want the image to be transparent, because like this, we only have the particles distributed on the image, like it doesn't have any background. It's just like a cutout of this and this is quite nice. Um, okay. Um, so right now the particles are a little bit too big. So let's go down with this to a really small number, like the max particle size 0 0.2 and the minimum size is 0 0.05. Let's reset. And now you can see we, we don't see a lot. <laughs> and that's because we need a lot of particles. Right now we only have five per, per frame. And we want this to be like 20,000. Like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of particles. <laughs> and then we don't need them to be alive for this long, so I changed this to four. And to have more variants, I also went with a number of four. And then let's, oops, let's zoom in a little bit. So now you can see this is already quite close to our image. And now let's, let's make some some more changes to the forces because right now it's a little bit too much um, turbulence for my taste um, and I want this to be a little bit closer to the image and not too fuzzy so I went down with the magnitude of the turbulence to 0 0.075 let's reset and yeah, now you can see it's it's moving slowly, but quite steady. Um, but I, I want it to be a little bit heavier. So I set up the turbulence on each axis to 0 0.05 and here minus 0 0.05 and also 0 0.05. And then I wanted the period to be a little bit smaller. So the period is like, if you go big with this, you can see it's moving around in a big period, just like when you have a noise and set up the period, it's bigger. And that's more like the pattern we are moving in now. And the smaller it is, the more fuzzy it is. Um, and I wanted this to be quite small, so I went with 0 0.05. But um, these are the numbers to play with, <laughs> to create your own kind of kind of artwork. 
Um, yes. Um, also, I changed the the seed a little bit to to change it. <laughs> um, and yes. So basically, that's that's it for the the settings we're using here. That's the technique I wanted to show. And another thing um, which is quite neat, and that's why we inserted this level here, is because when we rotate this a little bit, we can see the offset is quite big now. And if you don't want this to have a lot of offset and be more like a 2D image, you could just go into this level and in the RGBA settings you could just because we are using only the the blue channel of this so here in the high B channel so you could basically turn down these values and it wouldn't change anything because we just need the blue and then in this high B you could set this down to something really low and if we hit one now you can see the offset isn't that big so um, yeah, this um, changes the look of the image quite a lot. Um, so this is also something to play with. Um, in my case, I went with 0 0.2, um, which is, in my opinion, a quite cool middle ground to do different kind of stuff. Um, yes. All right, so that's the base technique. And now let's let's have a look at what I created with the technique I came up with. Um, and I will only go through this quite fast because I just wanted to show my process of, of creating stuff. So usually I create some sort of setup I find interesting and then I translate it into something I like. Um, okay, so let's create a null after this. And then first thing I did was making a little bit little feedback to have some sort of trails on those particles. So let's make a comp, change the operation mode to over, and then make a feedback after the null then use this keyboard in also as a reset for this one, so we can quickly reset it. Um, then I created a blur after this, and then a level so the feedback will disappear again. Um, and then connect this, and drag this as a reference on here. Now you can already see it does a quite cool blurring of this, um, but in, in this case I want the feedback to be on top of the particles, so we need to change the order in this comp. So just make the level on top of this. And then we need to make some changes, like to, in order to have this trails disappear again in this level. I went with an opacity by 0 0.995 and in the blur section I went with a filter size by 2 and a sample step of 0 0.8 and then because right now it does this kind of weird color stuff which I don't want and that's because um, our render when we zoom in here our render here is only 8-bit fixed in the pixel format and I changed this to 32-bit float um, to have better colors basically so if we reset this and let it play you can see it looks a lot better. Um, okay, 
So this is my feedback I used. And then I decided to bring in my original image again to comp this in a quite interesting way. So create a select and we will use this null for this select. So drag it on here. So we have it here. And then we need to, um, because this is using our render and our camera, and this is just a plain image, so they are a little bit offset, I think. So we need to um, match these. So the first thing, I want this to be a little bit more centered, because right now it isn't. And then I will also zoom in. So it's more like our reference image. And then I'm just using um, and over with this one as the first and this one as the second. Um, ah, yeah. Another thing we need to do for this, we need to create a fit after this because right now we have different ratios. Like this is a square, this is 16 to 9. So we need to make this fit to 60 to 9. So it has the same resolution as your render. And then fit. Oops. Just leave it on fit best. <laughs> and then um, also on this fit, I need to make sure that it is quite close to the position of our particles. Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, maybe a little bit <laughs> smaller. So this is just adjusting it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm making it, yeah. So this is, um, you need to find the right spot for this. It's a little bit annoying, but here we get there. Yeah. Maybe smaller again. Put it down. Yeah. I think this one is good to go for now. It's not perfect, but it's okay. I think maybe like this. Maybe a little bit bigger again. Yeah. I think this is fine. Um, I just wanted to show it so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I can delete this over again. It's just so these are on the same position. And then we will use a mat to comp these quite interesting. So this is the first input of the mat and this is the second one. So I want this, this one to be over this one. And as our mat, we use a noise and use this one as the first input so it sets the resolution then change the output to noise and then drag this here and maybe use this one as the input so it has the same pixel format than our render so maybe do it like this <coughs> all right then um, in this mat we will change the mat channel to luminance and then you can already see what this does so based on the black and white of this image it comps this over this so if we let's make it like this to show it so where wherever we have um, white we get this over this and where we have black there's nothing so it's just like a transparency mask um, so let's change this again and in my setup i went with a period of two harmonics one and i set the offset to 0 0.995 and the amplitude to 0 0.75 
And then to make it more interesting, animate this noise by heading into the transform and just typing apps time dot seconds. And to make it slower, I multiplied it with 0 0.1. Yes. So like this, we have a quite interesting pattern going on. And yeah, now I want to use um, some more abstract colors on this. Um, so I am using this one as a reference for two different noises. So let's create the first noise with, which is usually, usually, usually a black and white one. So let's make both inputs to this image, change the output to noise. And then I change the settings to a period of three and harmonics zero and an offset of 0 0.5. 5 and everything else is left on default and then we can just I don't know copy that noise and also I have a seed of 5699 just so we replicate the same thing I showed in the beginning and then um, in the second noise turn on uh, off the monochrome and there I went with a period of 2 and an offset of 0 0.741 and a seed of 5699 and that shows me that this one is wrong yes so the first seed is Two, two, eight, zero, and then I comped those two together. Um, yes. Um, then after this, because I want to be con able to control the background color by myself, I made an inside. Bring this in here, use this one as the alpha channel, and then we are transparent again, and then use a constant, change the output to under, and then you can bring in any sort of color you like as your background. So I went with something really bright, maybe a little bit more orange, maybe a little, yeah, whatever. So I won't <laughs> go too deep into that. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you stay on track because there are three more tutorials coming this month and I can't wait to show what else I did and yes and we have a new Patreon member welcome <laughs> all right um, <laughs> now we have some mails going on and I will just say goodbye